Well, good afternoon, and uh, from the old guard, uh, here are a few thoughts. Um, as I read the report, I thought, do I recognise this? Is this the world in which I, I work and have spent many years? And the answer to that is yes, I do. And uh, is this a world which is good enough? No, it's not. And why is it not? Because, as I think a number of the voices in the room already have said, because this is just simply not good enough for people who have lost everything and uh, who have reached a point where, despite all of our common humanity, they feel they can't cope. And uh, we certainly need to be doing better. I think the two areas that I would like to highlight, and uh, I think these are questions as much as they are responses to the report, but they, they very much chime, I think, with what John was saying in particular. Um, if we believe that we are part of a system, as, as, as Abby described, uh, then there's, a, there's, an in, there's, a, there's, a, there's an assumption in there, I think, when you talk about something which is a complex whole with a common objective, that there will be a level of collective action. And that that will be not simply so that we all have a nice sort of uh, warm feeling at the end of the day of, of working together in a, a collective manner, but because that will deliver an outcome which is better for people who need it. And that it will be quicker, and it will be more efficient, and it will be more relevant. <coughs> and I think that is one of the huge challenges that comes through to me, because there feels to be a contradiction in talking about a system, but then a lot of the information that comes through in the report is actually a description of diversification. And so, John, I think you're your challenge to us of are we heading for convergence or fragmentation? In my mind, it needs to be convergence, but I worry that it's fragmentation. And what does it require to change paths? I would suggest that actually it's about more mutual respect, listening to each other and to those we work with more, and genuinely adopting a behaviour which is more about collective action rather than cutthroat competition, and I worry enormously that uh, we are going down the latter road rather than the former. So that is one reflection. Uh, something else which you might expect me to talk about, and so I will, I will not disappoint, uh, but because I think it is at the heart of, of a lot of the uh, debates, is uh, encapsulated in, uh, in the report in the way it frequently is, which is, is the challenge of multi-mandate organisations. Uh, personally, um, I don't like the term multi-mandate, that's all right. Um, partly because I didn't like the word mandate, to be perfectly frank, because very few of the organisations in the room, my own included, um, we don't really have a mandate. We, we appoint ourselves and we say what we're going to do. And uh, there is only one organisation uh, in the room which actually has an internationally defi legally defined mandate. And, uh, and I, I think we sort of get rather beyond ourselves. Uh, what I would describe it as are organisations who uh, aim to work in many contexts. So I would prefer multi-context organisation. And it's the context that drives the action and that's where theory and practice become very difficult, and I think that comes through in the report. In theory, working in uh, many different contexts actually is a good thing because it extends the menu of what you can do, and it means that we ought to be in a position to really grab hold of the resilience agenda, preparedness, risk reduction, whatever you want to call it, and however you want to configure that, but it is very difficult to get it right. And I would suggest, and I could talk about this for hours, but you'll be delighted to know that I'm not going to, um, that actually it's not a challenge of principles. It is possible to work in many contexts and to 
in humanitarian contexts espouse and adhere to humanitarian principles. The challenges are internal, how one behaves differently in a different context, and how one addresses and lives with and changes the perceptions of others, which is a very natural thing to be very difficult. So I think that that is the real challenge of the resilience agenda, is uh, how we actually work in different contexts in different ways. And that, I would suggest, and this plays to very much the financial challenges which come through, uh, a shift not so much in humanitarian funding, which as the report demonstrates is um, holding uh, a growth level which I think none of us uh, would have expected it to, but it's a real challenge for a shift in models of development. And I think on the good news, and as a, a, a sort of resilient optimist, um, I think there is a shift in the development, development agenda, uh, and it's for us as humanitarians to move towards that and, and to embrace the challenges of it. And that means that we should be able to work more closely together and really adopt a convergence agenda. So those are just a few thoughts from me. I don't think it's quite my seven minutes, but I will hand the other two no, to someone else. Thank you. Just, but I'm going to use up your two minutes oh, by asking right two questions. I mm. mean, the first is, given the way you've described the multi-contextual, mm. not quite multi-mandate thing, how do I know when you're being dunantist and when you're not? <laughs> Good question. Um, maybe we could hang a flag out, I don't know. Yes. Um, no, I think that is absolutely, <coughs> absolutely the, the challenge. I think the challenge is for those of us who seek to work in those different ways and in different contexts to communicate when it is one thing and when it is another. It's, it's phenomenally difficult in terms of internal organisational behaviour and I think you have a right to ask. And I think we have a responsibility to communicate and to describe much more clearly than we do now. So I think that's a, a very a very helpful challenge and one that uh, I would be very interested to hear thoughts on from the floor. Someone else may push you harder and, later uh, on. But my other question to you is how do you react to this point that was made at the back that the cluster system, you know, might not be working quite as well as its proponents would have us believe? Um, I would agree to be honest. I think um, that we are better with the clusters than we were without them is true. That they are not delivering as much as they could and that uh, in many ways their purpose is becoming clouded if they begin to see themselves as uh, funding bodies and another hoop to, to pass through. I think is very is very dangerous. So um, I would say the cluster system is in that position of uh, of having uh, both uh, been better than we feared and not as good as we hoped. Good. Thank you very much. Uh, Mark, we'll come to you.